For a lot of us who were born around 30 years ago, these first few seconds are some of the most memorable moments in our lives. The original Contra is one of the very first games I've played. It's one of the games that inspired me to become a game developer some decades later. In today's video, I'm going to remake the iconic first level of the original Contra in 3D. There is just one problem. I suck at making 3D games. The very first 3D game I made resulted in this abomination. And after that, well, there is no after that. This will be my second ever 3D game. So, enjoy. I started by making some blocks for the player to walk in. I then attached a camera to the player so I can test the movement. Then I modeled the player. And by that I mean the player's gun. Because I decided I was going to make it a first person shooter. I tried to stay as faithful as possible to the original animations. Like the ridiculous running cycle. <laughs> He's like shoving his gun up and down. Or the spinning jumping thing. Actually, now that I think about it, what's even the point of spinning in the air like this? How is he even shooting his gun? And why are we raiding an alien base without a shirt? Anyways, after a few embarrassing attempts, I was able to get the gun firing. Now we all know that the default environment in any game engine is dog poop. So the next thing I did was make a panoramic sky using the actual background sprites from the original game. I then retextured the blocks and my bullets to look more like the actual sprites in the game. And now it's time to make our first enemy, these guys, who just run towards the crazy shirtless man without any weapon, despite having alien technology on their side. So I modeled this low-budget Ultraman for hours, and I then realized that I used the wrong reference. But it's fine, we're just gonna change the colors and roll with it. Now unlike Danny, who doesn't know poop about 3D modeling and animation, I'm actually a master 3D artist. Just look at this perfect run cycle. Now to the untrained eye this might look like a bug which I cannot fix, but this is intentional. His feet are rotating like that to act like a propeller so it would like uh, make him faster. So it's it's functional, it's not, it's not a bug. Since we're working with 3D, aside from just running forward, I also made it so that the enemy will follow the player left or right and jump when it no longer detects the ground in front of it. Bye, have a great time! For the enemy death effect, I copied the actual death effects right from the original game. Now that I had the basic things I need, it was time to finally get into the level design. I decided to make the whole stage 10 meters wide, just like your mom. I put the upper parts of the level to the left and the lower parts of the level to the right since I can't really stack them on top of one another like in the original game. For the water effect, I used this shader which was suggested by Captain Fubar and it worked perfectly. I'm about to say something controversial which might get me cancelled. At this point in the development of this game, I was getting super dizzy because of the spinning jump animation. So I decided to remove it. I'm sorry, I'm human, it's not my fault, I'm the victim, buy my merch. Now it's time to get to what I think is the most exciting part of Contra, the different weapons. At first I didn't want to put all of them in the game, but then again it wouldn't be Contra. 
But before we get to the actual guns, we need to make the pickups first. And for this, I simply got inspired by the actual pickups in the game. I exported them as 2D texture, and I thought I could easily convert them to 3D in Blender. Spoiler alert, I was wrong. It took me hours looking for a solution to do this. I converted the textures into colored SVG files, imported them to Blender, and this mess is the result. There are even holes in it which I had to fill, but in the end I think it worked decently. And now it's time for the actual guns. Luckily for me, the gun sprite in the original game stays the same for every weapon, so this time I have an excuse to be lazy. I only have to make the bullets. Let's start with the most basic one, the machine gun. This one was the easiest to do. I simply got inspired by the original sprite, replaced the sprite of my original bullet, and increased the firing rate. The next one is the strongest gun in the game, the S. Some call it shotgun, and when I was a kid I used to call it spray gun. Apparently it's also called spread gun. I guess because it spreads? For the spread gun, I took the machine gun bullet and spread them. Since we're working with 3D, I thought I should spread them horizontally instead of vertically, but I later changed this to be a mix of both horizontal and vertical spread. Next, the F gun. When I was a kid, I really thought this was a fairy gun because it looked like a fairy, but it turns out to be a flamethrower. I got inspired by the texture from the original game and made it orbit towards the center to achieve that spinning effect. Again I made it spin horizontally at first, but I later changed it back to the original vertical spin. The one I like remaking in 3D the most is the laser. If you look closely in the original game, each laser beam is actually composed of multiple bullets, I think about 3 or 4. So I separated my laser bullet into 4 parts so they are able to hit the enemy multiple times just like in the game. I then made the laser effect using particles. And now for the final gun, the R. I'm about to say something controversial which might get me cancelled. The R doesn't do anything. Now some people like to spread misinformation and say it increases rate of fire, but no, it does absolutely nothing. That's what I believed as a child and I will die holding on to that belief and I'm not gonna do any research regarding this. The R doesn't do anything. Now we have all the weapons we need. In the original game, we can get the weapon pickups from these eagle boxes and flying football things. For the eagle box, I got inspired by the original sprite and put it on top of the box as a texture. I also made an explosion effect, again using the particle system. For the football, I made a football. And I applied the texture from the original game. I then coded it so it moved in a sine wave motion. I used the same explosion effect from earlier. And with that, we have completed the easy part of developing this game. We now move on to pure suffering. Let me show you what I mean. Turrets. Turrets in 2D are nice, they only rotate on one axis, it doesn't take much to make them work. 
Turrets in 3D, however, will suck your soul. This is my 3D turret. It has a body that will rotate to follow the player on the x-axis, and a head which will rotate to follow the player on the y-axis. Simple enough, right? Wrong. I wasted a whole day trying to make this work. It was a disaster. Until I found this amazing tutorial. But that doesn't mean it was easy to implement from there. Let me educate you on the wonderful world of rotations in 3D. First we get the direction towards the player relative to the local coordinates for the body. We then get the angle from where we are facing and the player direction projected on the y and z axis. Multiply it by the negative sign of the player direction to know if we should rotate up or down. We then get the direction towards the player relative to our global coordinates for the head. Get the difference of angle from where we are facing and the direction towards the player. Multiply it by the negative sign of player direction to know if we should rotate left or right. Finally apply the rotation to both the body and the head by a specific rotation speed. Or the final rotation value, whichever is smaller. And now it works. And it only took me two days. After that, it was only a matter of spawning the enemy bullet from the end of the barrel. But in order to test this, we first have to implement the player death mechanic. Of course, I based it off the original game, which makes the player spin backwards and then respawn from above. I added a red effect on the screen to make it clear that you got hit. The turret can take several hits before it explodes. For this game, I settled on 5 HP, although in the original game it can take a lot more hits. I just thought hitting it over and over again is boring. When it dies, it uses the same explosion effect we made earlier. There's also this red turret, which pops out of the ground. For this, I just made our original turret red and hid them under the ground until the player gets close. For these shooting guys, I just took our original enemy model and gave it a different color and gave it the same gun as the player. I used the same 3D rotation principle we used earlier to rotate their whole body to follow the player along the X and Z plane. Although it would be weird if they moved like a turret. So I included three unique animations for this. One pointing up, one pointing straight, and one pointing down. These animations are played depending on the player's Y position relative to it. We're almost ready to lay out the whole level. There's just one more very important thing missing. You guessed it, the legendary bridge. This exploding bridge is so iconic if I didn't include it, I would get cancelled. Because of its nature, I didn't have a choice but to model it manually. Each bridge is composed of 4 exploding modules. I only had to make one of these modules. I set up a timer that makes each module explode after some time. This event gets triggered once the player is around the same position as the first module. When it comes to Contra, there is only one rule. You always fall on the second bridge. With everything ready, I moved on to laying out the final design of the level. I based everything as closely as I could to the original 2D level. If any game developers are watching right now, I know you guys are cringing that I'm doing it manually, instead of using some sort of 3D tile system. But the truth is I don't really know how, and I was only making one level anyway so I think it's a valid excuse. It's the same thing with the trees and the bushes. I placed them all by hand and with love. But if any Godot game developer knows how to do this better, please let me know in the comments. Now the only thing remaining is the boss. The giant door with cannons that cannot aim. And a cherry on top. This is probably the most boring boss of all time. I made each part separately in Blender, 
so that I can code them individually once I import them to Godot. This is important because each cannon is a separate object, as well as the weak point which is in the bottom part of the door. And of course, the bottom door itself, which explodes and gives the player the path to the next level. And we're done. Oh, let's not forget the cherry on top. Alright, now we're done. As if this game is not awesome enough, I also tweeted at Smooth McGroove and asked for his permission to use his Contra acapella from 7 years ago. To my surprise, he actually replied. So I guess this is technically uh, uh, our first collaboration. He just doesn't know it yet. And so I present to you Contra in 3D. And finally, here's a run with accurate jumping mode on. Konnichiwa, Dairan to Smash Brothers director Sora no Sakurai Masahiro desu. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Let me know in the comments which game you want me to do next. Of course, this is just a blatant ripoff of what Cody Can't Keep This did with Mario and Zelda and Sonic. So thank you Cody for giving me the idea. Also thanks so much for everyone who hang out in the stream, twitch.tv slash your mom dev by the way. Also we're just about to release the new demo of our game Polaris so if you want to follow that join the discord server in the description. Yeah, I think that's it. See ya.